I'm Harry Rock, and welcome to another edition of the Westfield Council on Aging Presents. This is a special collaborative effort between Tina Gorman, Interim Executive Director of the Westfield Senior Center, and Pete Coles, producer of WCPC Westfield Cable Channel 15. Our topic today is services and programs for Westfield's veterans. And my guest is Julie Barnes, who's the Director of Veteran Services for the City of Westfield. So, Julie, you've been on the show before, and I want to welcome yes, you back. Thank you. Always, we, we always love talking about our veterans. Yes. We're probably one of the most important groups of people we have in our community, for sure. And not that we're biased or anything, but uh, I can be. <laughs> you can be for sure. Um, but we're going to be talking about the wide range of services and programs that are available to Westfield's veterans uh, through the uh, Veteran Services uh, Department here in Westfield. And I have to tell you, just as, a, as an aside before we really get going in the interview, uh, how impressed I am with everything that you're doing there. Uh, you. you know, I've had occasion to be in there a few times. Um, sponsored one of the uh, Lunch. veteran lunches. We're going to talk about that in a second. And certainly uh, I participate in all of the Veterans Day celebrations and the Memorial Day celebrations. I love the parades, love going to Parker Park for all of those types of events. And, you know, again, I think it's so important that we are here to celebrate and recognize and honor our veterans yeah, thank for you. all the services Thanks that they support. have done. So no question. Lot. So speaking of that, um, yes. you started a program, was it last year? It was, or was last it year. Last year. Yeah. And it's the, uh, it takes place here at Westfield Technical Academy and the Tigers Pride yeah. restaurant. And these are lunches for veterans. They're free. So let's talk about that for a moment. What days do they fall on? Uh, are they all sponsored? Yeah. And how do people get involved with that? Yeah, it w it's a really neat um, event that we started um, through the Veterans Council. Um, we wanted to bring in other towns have veterans lunches, and we thought, why why can't we bring it into Westfield? There's got to be some way. And then we thought, you know, it might be nice to partner with another city organization, which is the school. And they have this amazing restaurant. I don't know if y'all been there, but <laughs> oh my goodness. They, it's Chef really Eric good. and his team do an amazing job. And the students are, are just great. Um, the meals are fantastic. So we thought, well, let's partner with them. So um, through the Veterans Council, they take um, donations. And then they sponsor a monthly veterans lunch and it's the first wednesday of each month and they start in october and they run through may um we're give or take a month in the beginning and the end due to graduation and then just getting the kids um, spun up in the program in the culinary arts program um and um, but they put it on once a month all of this year's um lunches are sponsored they're completely sponsored by different organizations and um we have had one uh, already, and we're looking forward to, to many more. So, yeah, and thank you for sponsoring. You are the first non-government and non-veteran yes. person who sponsored. So that was that was it meant a lot to them to see someone from the general public recognize mm. um, the the veterans in such a special way. So thank you. Well, um, Ann and I were yes. thrilled to do it, and we hope that, that we lead by example and that, that other individuals will look to uh, do this as well. Yeah. And hopeful that, hopefully that the uh, business community will really step up right. and support, as they always have. Yeah. And uh, I, I just think it's such a great thing for them to know that they are being appreciated. Yeah. And, you know, they, they come from a number of different uh, walks of life when it comes to the military, both right. different branches, but also they, were, they participate in a lot of different conflicts and stuff. Right. So it's not all just like Vietnam or right. Iraqi or whoever yeah. they might have been. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's we've got Korea and Vietnam, and then we've got Afghanistan and Iraq. You know, we've got a lot of uh, Korea current. is the far. We have no one from World War II. At there's this point. there's not a lot of World War II um, veterans left who are able to participate. Mm. Um, we do have one special <laughs> veteran. He's such a great guy, Mr. Jelly. He comes into the senior center and he comes in because our office is in the, the Council on Aging, the senior center. He comes down there for lunch all the time. He's 102. Is he really? He's amazing. Yeah, Army veteran from World War II. He comes in on his own. Yep, he comes. He he has his his uh, motorized um, okay, wheelchair sure. and and comes in and yeah. 
He's amazing. He's amazing. Oh, oh my gosh. How special. <laughs> so there are some that? World War II um, wow. veterans left. And yeah. Wow. Very, very special. And as, as I'm aware, uh, people do have to register. They can't yes. just show up. And right. how do they, they call your office? Right. So the day after the lunch um, is the, the beginning of the next month's registration and people will just call the office. And in an effort to not have the same people coming every month, if you've never come before, I allow pre-registration for the, for the next month. Oh. So um, very often we'll, we can only take 60, they only have 65 seats there. I think if they had 200, it would probably be full. Right. <laughs> it's right. just amazing, the response. And right. um, so we ask people to, to call very soon because very often we'll have 20 to 30 people pre-registered for the next month that have not come yet. Oh, wow. So wow. It's, it's well received. Um, they feel very much appreciated at the lunch and um, they, they, they like it a lot. I mean, the meals are fantastic. The right. students do a great job. Um, we sometimes we'll have the Westfield High School band. Um, we've mm -hmm. had the choir perform. It, it just I don't even know about it. Sometimes we'll show up and they'll be there, and it's 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 a just a blessing to me to have right. the support from other city agencies and right. and the kids being involved too. And what a special collaboration! Right. Um, and you know um, what a great thing for you to even think about when you were really conceiving, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about what where to go with this. And how to put this whole program together, but perfect match of our young people providing food and a meal and a service to the veterans, because a lot of times they really don't appreciate what the veterans have done or realize, you know, how much they have been through to allow them to enjoy the quality of life that we have here in the United States. Yes. So yep. I just love that collaboration of the youth helping to serve the, uh, and they're all, mm -hmm. most of them are seniors at this point. Right. Uh, right. So it's an older population. So yeah. Fantastic. I, I, I'm catching a cold on this, so if you don't have the numbers, don't worry about it. But I'm, uh, how, any idea how many veterans there are in Westfield? Well, I, I would just go by the census, and the latest census has us between 2,000 and, uh, and 2,500. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's um, a lot. So, yeah, between the last two, um, yeah, there's quite a few, which is a Approximately five percent of the population. Wow! So oh, I had no idea. But you think with Chicopee being so close, people, you know, um, being there, and then um, Barnes. Oh, sure, and Barnes, right? Yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so we've right. got a, quite a few people who stay in the local area. You're right. And then you got even Bradley in Connecticut, and, and they yeah. have the C-130s down there now. The people live here and and work down there. So there's wow. quite a few installations around the area. Wow. That's and that's just air. You know, you got, you got Army too. I forget right. about them. Sorry. <laughs> And actually, you yourself are a veteran. Yes. Which was in the military. Kinda, you know, I need to really, you know, it's not like you're a staff person that happens to run the office. Right. You yourself are a veteran. Why don't you right. talk about that for a quick second? Yeah. So um, I got in the military when I was in college. I was a sophomore in college, and I started doing Civil Air Patrol. And I thought, oh, this is really cool. Of course, it was during the Top Gun era when everybody wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> Man, well, it didn't matter. I just wanted to be a pilot. So that was really fun. So I had a friend who worked at the base, and I got a job in recruiting as a civilian when I was 18. And I was just a secretary. And then I thought, oh, this is pretty neat. I think I'll just sign myself up to go to basic training. So I was enlisted for four years, and I worked in supply up at Barnes. Is and that right? Yep. And then after I got my degree, I got my commission, and I applied for pilot positions from Maine down to Baltimore, and I got a pilot slot down in Baltimore on the C-130s down there. So I went down, and the, the training was a year and a half delay, so they said, do you want to go to navigator training in the meantime? And what do you do when you're 20 years old? Sure, why not, you know? Right. So I did. I went out to California and went to training, went to survival training up at Washington State and follow-on training in Arkansas. And it was an amazing experience. Um, so, And then I was a C-130 navigator, and I put in a total of 11 years, worked full-time on the base. Um, you worked 11 years? Yeah, wow. yeah. Yep, and finished up in upstate New York because my husband was in as well, and he was the commander of the gunnery range up at Fort Drum. So we moved the whole family up there. By that time, we had two little kids, and it got to be a lot um, with my husband being the commander. So I stepped down after 11 years and hmm. retired, retired the hat. And <laughs> but it gave me a good basis for the job that I have now, and I really appreciate um, yeah, the Yeah, well, position. it makes sense. You're such a great fit for that because you've Thanks. lived it. You understand it. Uh, you can relate to their yeah. world. 
So, yeah. and then your husband was he a full time career? Did he go through? His yes, he did twenty eight years active wow. duty. Yep, active wow. duty guard. Yep, yeah. Wow. So that was it, it. Gives me another neat perspective of the spouse's side of it as well. So oh, sure. you know, I was I was in. I you know went through it. And I got the spouse's side as well. So I'm able to talk to the spouses, and even we have quite a few widows that are on our our programs. Um, which is great. The state has a, a program for low-income veterans and their spouses. Mm. And then the federal side also has programs for veterans and their spouses. And I think a lot of times people don't know that the spouses are eligible as well. Mm. So if if anybody ever had any questions, they just come down to our office Monday through Friday. Just walk in. No appointment necessary. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you both to you and to Brian for your service to our country. Uh, nothing more special, that's for thank sure. You. And uh, really interesting. I didn't realize you'd been in for 11 years. Yeah. So let's let's get back to um, real life here. Um, the Veteran Services Office, yes. um, which is located where? It's located in the Senior Center of the Council on Aging in 45 Noble Street. Okay, and you're right on the first floor. Yep. Um, so you have staff that work there? Yes. And who are There's they? There's three people in the office. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm the director of the office, and we have James Jordan, who's the veteran service officer. He does a lot of the, the federal claims, the VA claims, um, filing for compensation or pension. Um, there's a program called Aid in Attendance, which is helpful for folks that are going into a nursing home or need in-home care. Um, that gives them money each month to provide that care. Um, and um, burial benefits, they're I feel like there's so many benefits available that people have no idea. Mm. Um, and we just say, come on in and see us. People try and do all that paperwork on their own. It's overwhelming. So we are skilled at it. We've been trained in it. Um, we can get it right to the VA, and we can do all the work for them. So we just tell them, please come into the office. So James is the expert on that. And then we've got Jean Thoreau, who, if anybody out there is on social media, <laughs> Jean Thoreau is Everybody our, knows is our Superman. Right. He, he is Superman. Um, Yeah, he's our city graves officer, which by law, every city is supposed to have a, a graves officer in the veterans department to maintain uh, veterans graves. In, in every city and town? You're supposed to by law. I didn't know You're that. supposed to have wow. that, yep. So um, Gene uh, works for the city, which is his passion after he retired from the military. He was at Barnes, too. We we worked together up there. And Oh, you um, actually worked with him? We, we were we were in at the same time. Oh, okay. He was in communications. I was in supply. Okay. So. But it, um, yeah, so we, we did we did some things together and deployments and all, all that good stuff. My sister actually worked for him. <laughs> a family affair um but yeah he maintains all the veterans graves um he cleans them he repairs them he documents them and um flags them uh, he his i feel like he works <laughs> a lot harder than i do sometimes he is always on the go always doing stuff you know uh... Every community should have a gene throw. Yes. He has been, I've gotten to know him um, really through the Westco 350 when mm -hmm. we were starting. We were spending our money to help preserve and restore a lot of the plaques that are on the green and down at the burial right, ground right, right. and a few places like that. And so that's where I really got to know him because he had brought in um, uh, uh, Gordon Pomfret. Yes. The restoration. Uh, from restorations mm -hmm. to work on the two, the Civil War statue by the Green and also General oh, Stepford right. statue by the Green. So that's where I first met Gene and uh, immediately just created a friendship with him and kind of followed him around and seeing all the work that he's done. I also live right next to Middle Farm Cemetery. Mm -hmm. They've done a tremendous amount of work. Yes. I always see him up there with his little crew of volunteers. Yes. But when I look at the amount of work that he has done, our cemeteries mm -hmm. actually, like Middle Farms is a good example. That's an older cemetery going mm -hmm. back 1700s. When you drive by there and you're looking at these lily white gravestones, yeah. which originally were gray and covered with lichens and fungus and mold and moss and everything else and mm -hmm. broken, they look like they're brand new. They do. He has just been unbelievable. I know he's doing a lot of work at, at uh, Pine, Pine Hill Pine Cemetery. Hill. and yeah. 
uh, Southwick and Agawam. He's all yeah. over the place. Yeah, people are trying to steal him from us. <laughs> yes. You can't have him. No, you can't have him. That's what I tell people. But he is just boundless amount of energy. And what's great is he's cloning himself now. Right. And teaching other people. And that's the best thing he can do is teach yeah. other people how to do it. And so I know there's a lot of work going on in the old burying ground with Cindy right. Gaylord and the historical commission mm -hmm. and what the work that they have done in there i know you and brian were in there to see that yeah uh, we, we've helped gene um on many occasions go and clean and like you say he's cloning himself and the good thing is i mean nobody's going to be able to do their job forever we need to pass right. it on the legacy to the next generation so right now we have a program in place where um, veterans can get a property tax abatement by volunteering a certain number of hours. So if you volunteer 100 hours over the course of the fiscal year, you can get $1,500 off your property taxes. And there are two volunteer positions. One is in the schools. We've been working with the schools to have safety attendance, and um, that's been working really well. And then, um, of course, Gene has taken um, half of the group, and they're going out with him. And they've been doing an amazing job. <laughs> the guys are great. They say, Gene's working us really hard. <laughs> okay. So, but they, you can get up to a hundred hours. You can work up to a hundred hours to get the abatement. These guys in the first four months of this fiscal year have put in a hundred hours already and they will keep going. And they'll keep going. And there's other people it. who right. aren't veterans who can't get the tax abatement that are out there as well working with Gene. Right. So this is, this is a, a, a love that people have in their heart to to give back, and um, it's it's really nice to see. Yeah, he yeah. He's, he's really a special individual, mm -hmm. and you know I think the entire city and all, and all of our veterans, uh, but also all of our citizens really do owe him a debt of of uh, gratitude for the amount of work that he has done over the years and the restoration and preservation that's going on. Yeah across all the cemeteries and especially with all the veterans uh putting up flags and the little plaques mm -hmm. and you know he's just just amazing and you always see him at the veterans cemetery at the uh, ceremonies and marching in the parades and right. stuff he's always in the uniform and yeah. he just lives and breathes it loves it, it and it, it is truly his passion yeah. so we're very fortunate so thank you gene thoreau for yes. all the work you're doing <laughs> you know i want to keep going you mentioned the veteran property tax work off program right. um who's available for that and or who's eligible and right. what what is the availability how do people find out more about that so um anybody who is a veteran and who has an honorable discharge is able to apply so they would just come to my office and i okay. would go through both of the volunteer opportunities find the best fit for them and then just fill out the short application a couple papers for uh, city hall and um we're off and running really now is it is anyone avail uh, eligible or do you have to hit a certain income level or below is it's, it, is it based it's available on? to anyone is it to anyone yep there there okay. is no income um limit so okay. you know say you make over fifty thousand right. dollars. there's no income limit if you're already getting a service connected disability and you are eligible for another kind of a tax abatement on a federal level um you you would get that as well so it is not a substitute for the one you're already getting hmm. it's a really great and city council passed this and kudos to them for the support that they give to the veterans in our city um it there's there's a lot of support for veterans in yeah. the city yeah. That's great. Yeah. Is there a limit on the number of people that can qualify? Or um, We have a limit of 20 right now. We okay. have not hit that. We have one more position open for the cemeteries, and we have eight more positions open for the schools. So they're defined positions. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because Gene can only handle so many people to be out with him, and right. um, so he's training all of them. And he likes to be there when they're working to make sure that they're, you know, in case they have questions or something goes wrong. Um, and then the schools, um, they would they have to go through another application process with the schools because they're going to be around like children. They have to do with the quarry and the fingerprinting and right. all that. But the, the gentlemen that are working there now um, love it. And they yeah. love being around children. So if you like children, it's in the elementary schools. And um, they just help with the security uh, Make sure things are locked down. You know, um, you're not going to be like carrying a gun, <laughs> carrying a gun going around <laughs> uh, like that. But uh, they just, um, even if the children are having a hard time during the day, they'll come out to the safety attendant 
one of them was um, doing puzzle with one of the children oh, that were having right? a hard time or nice. reading books with them. Nice. Or some, some of the children, you know, if, if they're acting up or whatever, they bring them out and kind of have a one-on-one -on -one time, which is really great for the teachers. And my daughter's a teacher. I, I know she would appreciate some extra hands whenever she could use them. So it really, it really um, works out well on, on both sides. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, switching gears here, um, I was on your website and I noticed a program about your military tribute banners for 2024, and I was curious about what that is and how do you get involved, and it, it sounded like a really cool program. So I don't know if you've seen the banners around town this past year. They're hanging on the light poles. They go around the town green and then up um, Elm Street toward um, the bridge, and um, we're going to do that again next year. We have 30 slots available. I have seen those. Yeah, right. they're really beautiful, and um, they're $160 for the banner. The family fills out a small application, and um, they will pay me, and then I order all the banners, and um, they are displayed from Memorial Day through Veterans Day, so they'll be coming down shortly, and then the banner is actually given back to the family. The family mm. gets the banner back. Um, it's it's a nice program and a great way to recognize and um, memorialize or pay tribute and honor to our veterans. And it, it, does the family actually get their name on their yes. specific banner? So it's, it's so it's really it's not like just a stock banner and they all look the same. It, no. these are specific to their right. Family you give name. the people give me a picture of the person. Whether it could be a current picture. I've had pictures back to Korea, World War II. You know, uh, family members who've passed away that were from Westfield. So it was some tie to Westfield. Mm. Um, you can't have your. <laughs> Your grandfather, who's always lived in California, have a banner in Westfield. That would be kind of funny. But right. um, some tie to Westfield. If they've lived in Westfield or they served in Westfield at Barnes or something like that, um, we'd be happy to display um, that for them. And, um, yeah, there's something else I was going to say. I can't remember now. Um, That's a really cool program. It, it is very, yeah. very special. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I had seen the banners, but I really didn't understand or know the significance behind them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you notice them when you're driving down the street and stuff. Right. But, there are not uh, many communities that have them. East Hampton, Blanford, not too many around the area. Right. So How many can you accommodate here, roughly? Um, 30. We've, we've done wow. 30. We're going to do 30 again next wow. year. So, wow. And we had a couple people who wanted again last year who couldn't that I've reserved spots for. So. Okay. Um, but there's quite a few openings, and I'll start taking applications in January. Um, so if you think you might want one, you can give my, call, my office a call, and I can walk through it with you. But, yeah, the, the pictures come to our office. The, um, you can specialize it with the, the name of the person, the era that they served in, um, any special accolades if they're a prisoner of war, um, something like that. Oh, that wow. can go on there as well. Oh, wow. Their years okay. of service go on there. Yeah. Very, very special. Yeah, I would think that people would want to take advantage of yeah. that. So let's, uh, what, what veteran organizations are in town and uh, why should veterans really think about joining them and getting involved with them? Right. I feel like um, over the past couple decades, there's been a movement to not join organizations. Um, and I, I feel like I want to say back in the day, but people used to come home from wherever they were serving, join the organization. It was a way for them to work through maybe problems that they had or have that camaraderie that they had in the military. And um, it, I feel like you just don't see that anymore. And I, I, I kind of feel like it, it, it's very helpful for veterans, especially the younger veterans, if they could get involved in the, the American Legion Post, which is right here in Westfield. They do a tremendous job. Um, of outreach into the community as well. A lot of fundraisers um, mm -hmm. supporting the, uh, the folks at Barnes. They do a trunk or treat. They do a Christmas party. They have Sunday meals um, where they um, provide a meal every Sunday. You just have to call in, and anybody can call in. You don't have to be a veteran mm -hmm. to do it, which is nice because they are fundraisers, and they are just taking that money then, putting it right back into the community. Mm -hmm. So the Legion does a great job. Um, there's also the, the VFW that used to be in town um, closed down. Now, everybody from Westfield, Russell, the surrounding areas, there's a big VFW in Southwick. So we encourage people, if they want to join the VFW, oh, Veterans okay. of Foreign Wars, sure. to go to Southwick. Um, the Vietnam Veterans of America, they have a chapter here in, in Westfield. Love those guys. Special place in my heart because my dad was a Vietnam veteran. 
And um, the Marine Corps League is here in Westfield as well. Yeah. Um, they're on the north end of town, across from Elm Pizza. Probably most um, well known for the flag deposit box that's yeah, outside, right. you know, um, that used to be the only one here. Right. But um, they're great organizations, tremendous people who do a lot of good for not only veterans, but for others as well. Right. Yeah. Right. So a lot of opportunities for Lots. people to. Yeah. And, and, and I have the applications in my office. So if you're, where do I go kind of a thing, just come down can apply, I'll forward you. You'll right. get somebody from the organization to contact you. So. And it's nice to be around people that can be of support to you, right. and especially if you're still struggling with some of the issues of loss or experiences that you've had uh, in these kind of things. Yeah. You've got people yeah. that can commiserate right. and can help yeah. you through it. Even so. like a PTSD or something, talking right. through it with someone who's been there right. means, I, I feel like it means so much more than sitting right. in front of someone who's just a clinician. And I love seeing, you know, they get involved in the community. They were certainly involved. They helped us with the Westco 350. They helped with the city flag or, or the uh, uh, some of the city, uh, I think the Christmas tree they, one of them, I think they do the hot chocolate and. Uh, they they're involved in. They're a involved lot in a of lot different of different things, things even flagging the cemeteries. Yeah. Um, we'll be flagging St. Mary's Cemetery here. Right. The Legion does that. So a lot of great community service yeah. available there. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. Yes. Um, so there are me veteran ID cards. Mm -hmm. I was reading about this. Uh, can you talk about who's eligible and what the benefits are and what what exactly is a veteran ID card? <laughs> so we. We started um, back in 2019 this program for veterans and prior service members. So if you were in the Guard or the Reserve and you just served your term, you get out and even if you served in, in Vietnam or you just served your two-year, your four-year term, you get out, you cannot have a military ID card unless you've retired or are in the service. Hmm. So you just don't have one. You can, there sometimes if you're in the VA healthcare system, you have a VA healthcare ID card, but there's nothing, no military ID card. So we have created and um, basically duplicated uh, towns around us, a veteran and prior service member ID card for Westfield residents. And then we went around to the local businesses in town and asked if they support veterans and said, do you want to be on this list that we have of um, discounts given if they uh, show their ID card? We, we got 30 businesses to do that. And that was back before COVID. Hmm. <laughs> so I feel like COVID kind of <laughs> brought uh, everything to a halt, yeah, but sure it's did. spinning back up again. Um, right. So I, I have, every week I'll have somebody come in and, and um, t have a picture taken with the ID card and it's a, it's like a license it's it's a nice looking ID card and it shows when when they served the era they served the branch they served their picture is wow. on it oh, nice. and then on the back it says it could be used for a Westfield um, business discounts wow yep good program because it makes people feel like hey instead of showing your discharge right, papers right, which right. I mean it means nothing to a lot of you know sure. the average person at least it's their pictures on it yeah, very, very, very yeah. cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I think a, the retired flag drop box, yes. um, you know, something that's important to all of us because our flags over time, they get tattered and worn and ripped. And, you know, we, we what do need we do to, with them? Right? What do we do with them? And we need to make sure that we're disposing of them right. properly and with the proper decorum. Right. So right. where and, and how do they do that? We were talking about that flag drop box that used to be, what well, it is still, that used to be the only one in town up at the Marine Corps League. Um, a friend of mine a couple of years ago who was a member of the Air National Guard at Barnes, um, Mike Buell is his name. He um, is an amazing woodworker. He uh, built another flag drop box, and it's right outside the Council on Aging, which is nice because now we have one in the north end of town, one in the south end of town. And um, what happens is when they get full, we empty them, take them in, and we um, wait till the flag retirement ceremony, which is at Barnes at the fire department. And they have, um, it's, they call it a retirement ceremony. You're, you're, they call it cremating. You're burning the flags, but in a respectful honor. And there's a whole process to it. There has to be mm. someone from the military organization there. And there's the whole um, um, order of the day. You know, you, a lot of the uh, uh, Boy Scout troops will be there as well and make that part of their program for the year. Um, so mm. if you have any kind of flag that you need to retire, bring them down to either the Council on Aging or up to the Marine Corps League and just put them right in the drop box. Wow. Yep. Yeah. 
I, I really encourage our residents to do that. Uh, we need to show our proper respect for the flag, for what it represents, what mm -hmm. these veterans have been through to protect it and allow this country to be what it is. And when the time comes, when you've got flags in your yard or on your house, on your boats, uh, wherever you might have them, really make sure that you are disposing of them properly and showing the proper decorum and respect possible. So yeah. there's nothing that breaks a veteran's heart more than seeing a tattered right. flag flying. So. Right, absolutely. Um, let's, you mentioned it earlier, but I wanna dive into it a little bit more again, just to reinforce it. Uh, Massachusetts financial aid programs that are available to low income veterans. Right. So the uh, state of Massachusetts is the only state in the entire country that has written into law a low-income assistance program for veterans. And it's amazing, really. So if you fall under the, the um, federal poverty level, you are eligible for financial assistance through the state. And each city in the state um, has a veteran service officer, like myself, that administers these benefits. People come in, I, I say, if you are struggling financially, come in and see me <laughs> because I can guarantee there's something that I can do. And if it doesn't, some, I have the nice thing about being in the Council on Aging is I have access to things beyond veterans. Hmm. Um, and I've, I've, Good point. I've got a lot of um, experience now in, in Medicare, Medicaid, which I didn't know I would have to know. <laughs> But there's so many programs that people don't know about. They're paying for their Medicare Part B premium, but they're not. They're below the limit where they don't have to pay it. It's mm. one piece of paper. So I've had veterans come in. They don't qualify for my program, but I can file that paperwork for them. And now they aren't paying their Medicare Part B premium. The mm. state's picking it up. So there's, it, it's the benefits are endless. And I say, if you are a veteran or a spouse or family member of a veteran, just come in and talk to us. We, we sit and talk to people, and there's people coming from other towns. That's fine. We'll talk to you anytime. We'll talk to anyone anytime. Hmm. So come on in. But that specific estate program, um, the majority of people that are on it, it reimburses for medical. Um, so they get all their medical reimbursed, whether hmm. it's a doctor's appointment, the co-pays for it, a hospital right. stay, eyeglasses, hearing aids, dental. Um, it's an amazing program. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, I definitely, you know, one, I was just sitting here thinking about the fact that because you are in the senior center building, you've got access to all those services as well. And I think that for most of our veterans, they all qualify as a senior. So they should be coming in to see what kind of services not only do you offer, but what does the senior center offer? Exactly. Both for recreation, support, family, meal, pre meal programs. Yep. There are so many things. We have such an active senior center. We really do. And there's a lot of opportunities for mm -hmm. people to take advantage of things that you never would have thought of, quite frankly. Right. People come into the veterans office and leave as a member of the <laughs> yeah. senior center because they do such a great, I'm, the girls at the front desk do an amazing job. Right. And um, so we just ask if they're members. If they're not, we go through all the list of the Council on Aging um, mm. programs that are available. And they are sh a lot of people are shocked to hear it. But another great um, area of cooperation between two city organizations, you know. Um, so it's nice to be able to connect um, with with other yeah. other uh, programs in the city. Yeah, very very cool. Mm. So, what ceremonies uh, should veterans always have on their calendars to support? There's a lot of things I was going say, all on. All of them. <laughs> All of them, correct. So let's go through them because yes. a lot of times there's there are ceremonies and events that people don't even think about. I mean, we right. think about the traditional ones, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, right. Fourth of July. But what, what, right. what? The big parade ones, I think, are the people, the ones that folks remember the most, um, right. which makes sense. Um, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, but Vietnam Veterans Recognition Day. Um, that's um, something that's done every year, and the list and the dates change every year. So. Um, you can go onto our website on the city or come to the office and I have a list printed out there. I do a, um, a newsletter and I send it out to all the veterans in the city once a year in January. And it has all, all this information that we've been talking about. I try to squeeze into that newsletter oh, and get okay. it sent out okay. once a year. Um, but yeah, they're all listed there. So Vietnam Veterans Recognition Day, Patriots Day, which 
it's it kind of went away for a little bit, kind of coming back. <laughs> Maine and Massachusetts are the two states that recognize Patriots Day. Mm. Um, the uh, 104th Infantry Regiment Memorial, which is up at Appermont Park, up yep. by the airport. Um, I used to do that when I was at Barnes. I was on the honor guard up there, and we'd go do that. Um, so good memories of that. We have the Purple Heart Memorial Ceremony. Um, they just installed a uh, memorial stone up at the Great River Bridge. Oh, yes, yeah, I've seen that. It's really, right. really nice. Beautiful. Yeah, right. so they do a ceremony. And then the POW MIA ceremony is a candlelight ceremony that's usually held the first weekend of September. Um, and then um, Pearl Harbor ceremony yeah, which sure. is in december december 7th of course every year and um other than veterans day and pearl harbor day um the other um the other ceremonies change dates so check check the website or come down and see me and i'll print print out the list for you, you can keep it right on your fridge <laughs> yeah 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 it, it means a lot to have um the general public come in and support the veterans especially when you're talking about the pow mia where there's still people missing from past mm. wars, people who were from Westfield, um, and also like the Vietnam veterans, you know, I'm, I, they they did not have a warm welcome. So to have no, somebody, they didn't. To have people recognize them now and support right. them now means a lot. Right. So. Right. Um, you know, and I think Julie, to your point, and I would really encourage all our residents. Westfield has actually been very, very supportive of all of our different events that goes on. Um, and I love when I you know, we've always participated. When I was the director of the YMCA, we would bring all of our kids, and we would inv we would march in a Memorial Day parade or the Veterans Day parade. Um, but I encourage all of our residents to get out. Generally, it's always on Elm Street. And I could tell you that it means a lot to them to come down and see all those people lining the streets and clapping and waving flags and really showing their respect and their honor uh, and their recognition for everything that the veterans have done. So, you know, Westfield has really, as a community, really stepped up and has always done a great job in recognizing. And I always love to see, like with Parker Park, Veterans Day or Memorial Day, just how many people come out and participate in that event. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, yeah. but, you know, keep coming, Westfield. Keep coming. We need to do that. Uh, yeah, and that park has undergone a lot of renovations and made it more open and more welcome. Right. So um, it's going to be phenomenal. Once just it's like done. everything in the city. Yeah. Hang tight, everybody. It's yeah, I've be been amazing. watching. I've been watching. I've been driving by there, and it, it's really going to be phenomenal yes, when it's done. Definitely. Um, so, how do people get in touch with your office uh, to get more information? Uh, talk about your website for a minute. Right. Uh, so the website falls under the city. So you just go to City of Westfield, and then up in the search bar, you can type veterans. That's the easiest way to get to us. And, and then it comes to everything that we've talked about today. I, I think almost everything is on there. Um, but if you're not computer savvy, um, please give me a call, 572-6247. Um, or if you just like to the in-person thing, we are in the office Monday through Friday. James and I are there. Um, we're, James gets in at 8.30. I'm there till 4, 4.30. So swing by. We're there, and um, we'd love to see you. We'd love to meet you, even if you don't want to talk about benefits or anything. I just like I like meeting our city's veterans. So Yeah, and I want to commend you uh I spent some time on your website as I was prepping for this interview, so I had a kind of a sense of everything that we'd be talking about. Mm -hmm. Very easy to navigate. Okay. It's all right there. Matter of fact, I printed out a couple of pages of the, uh, you can't really see that, but this is really what it looks like when you go on to the city government uh, website. and. Uh, they just have drop-down menus. You'll see all the blue links. You just click on them, and you can get to all the information that you need to very, very easily. Um, but And everything was there, easy to follow, right. and uh, I was very impressed with it. So, again, uh, there's no excuse for not knowing. We have right. access both through the website, but I guess more importantly, come down to the yeah. Westfield Senior Center to see Julie and her Please. staff because they're just waiting and ready uh, yes. to spend some time with you. Um, anything else that we haven't chatted about that you want to bring up um, to share with our veterans? 
Well, there's always new things that are going to be coming up. If you are a veteran and you haven't received a newsletter, please come down and see me, and I'll give you one or put you on the list. I get it. I get the list through the census, so I just mail it out to people who have registered as veterans through the census. Maybe you didn't check that box, and you're a veteran and haven't got the newsletter. Please come down and see me. And there's always new programs going on. I have... I have every, all the meals and the events of all the organizations. The Marine Corps League has a breakfast um, once a month. The, um, the American Legion Post has their dinners or different events. Anybody that's having a veteran tied event, I have posters in my office. So if you need help, a lot of people ask like furniture donations or things like mm. that. They want it to go to veterans. We have, um, uh, we work in cooperation with a place called uh, Homeward Vets in Ludlow. They have a warehouse there. They accept Is donations right? and they give to veterans free of charge. Anything they want, they can come in and take whatever they want. So and people can give things directly. People can to give them. directly to them. Yep. Wow. So if you you want more information about that, about that um, really, there's there's a lot of information out there, and and I'm trying to push it out. That we have a Facebook page. Um, I try and push things through that. Our events are listed on there. Um, of course, with um, around the time of Veterans Day, you're going to get a lot of people pushing a lot of free things. Um, so we'll, those are all be on our, our Facebook page as well. But throughout the year, there's events and programs and things going on that people uh, might want to get involved in. Um, we, I have volunteer opportunities um, to come and help me in the office with a few things. So if you if you think you might want to come down and get involved with the Veterans Office, please come visit me. I'd yeah. love to meet you. Well, Julie Barnes, Director of Westfield Veterans Services here uh, in our fine community, I want to mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for uh, having me. A, a wealth of information. <laughs> There's no question that you know your work. And the thing that I would say to our citizens out there, whether you're a veteran or whether you are a support person, a family member of a veteran, uh, who needs some help. If you need information, don't hesitate to come down to the Westfield Senior Center to get into the Veteran Services Office to see Julie and her staff. Go on their website, check out their Facebook page. The information is there, and I can tell you that it's easy to access and easy to follow. So find out what the services are, because I'm um, guessing that there's probably many things that you aren't even aware of. So again, thank you, Julie Barnes, for everything that you're doing to support our community and our veterans. Uh, no work it's is my honor. Truly. No, no, no more important work than what you're doing. That's for sure. Thank you. I want to say special thanks to Pete Coles, our WCPC Westfield Cable Channel 15 manager and producer for his help and support to make this show possible. I am Harry Rock and on behalf of Tina Gorman and Pete Coles, this has been another edition of the Westville Council on Aging Presents. We'll see you the next time. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great day.